This week's gospel tells us the story of how through a man's faith, salvation comes to him and his house. And it reminded me of a funny story the Reverend Billy Graham told. Early in his ministry, he arrived in a small town to preach a sermon. And wanting to mail a letter to his family to let them know he had arrived safely, he asked a young boy on the street where the post office was. When the boy told him where to find it, Dr. Graham thanked him and said, You know what? If you come to church this evening, you can hear how to get salvation. You can hear me telling everyone how to get to heaven. And the boy laughed at Dr. Graham and said, I don't believe for a second you can tell me how to get to heaven because you don't even know your way to the post office. <laughs> well, Jesus, as we know, does know the way to heaven. And like Zacchaeus, he calls out to each and every one of us to show that he is the way to salvation. Today's gospel reading is actually one of my favorite stories in all of the gospels. The story of Jesus' encounter with Zacchaeus means a lot to me. Now Zacchaeus was a tax collector, and if you haven't noticed by now, the residents of first century Judea really did not like tax collectors. And I suppose not much has changed for people today, really. But the Jewish people at that time had a pretty good reason to be suspicious of tax collectors. The Romans would seek out well-educated Jews and employ them as their tax collectors. And the Romans didn't care how much the tax collectors taxed people as long as they got their cut. So tax collectors back then could gouge the people of tons of money, and they often did. So that tells you that Zucchaeus was not the kind of person who would be greeted with smiles and small talk in the marketplace. He would have been seen by others as greedy and a traitor to his own people. However, like always, Jesus looks at what's beneath the surface. He sees people for who they truly are and knows what's in our hearts. Now, nobody in Jericho that day would have been happy to see Zacchaeus. But he risks going out among the people who dislike him so much to see Jesus. And after he climbed that tree, imagine his surprise when Jesus looks up and calls out to him. The crowd was probably saying, how does Jesus know this Zacchaeus, this, this crook? And Zacchaeus was probably thinking, how does Jesus know my name? Why is he talking to someone like me? Of course, Jesus knew the risk of talking to Zacchaeus. He knows that he will be seen as unclean since he'd have associated himself with someone who is seen by others as a great sinner. And you can imagine the people there were filled with anger that this supposed holy man, Jesus, was spending his time talking to someone like Zacchaeus. But this here is where we see the beauty of the message of Jesus the beauty of how much God loves us. He sent his son to socialize with those seen as sinners, to eat among those seen as sinners. It's our task, our calling, to follow the example of Jesus, not just not reaching out, not just to the people who make us comfortable, but reaching out to everyone. In the world we live in today, there are so many things that often cause people to despise other people. People disagree with someone's way of life, their politics, their sexuality, their this or their that. I'm sure there's something about each and every one of us that somebody out there dislikes or approves of. Even Pope Francis has received criticism for focusing so much on people some see as sinners, or those who some in society deem the lowest of the low. But I believe he tries to do what Jesus did, to see the person for who they are, people who are made in the image and likeness of God, not what others in the world perceive as a sinful person. We are called to be like that too. Jesus himself said, do not judge and you will not be judged. And this gospel today shows us that only God knows what's truly in a person's heart. The thing is, Jesus saw the goodness in Zacchaeus, and he saw what he could become. That's the key point here. 
Jesus longs to reach out to each and every one of us, and he sees the goodness in all of us. He meets us where we are in life and simply asks us to follow him. The church has room for people of all walks of life, and he gives us his grace to make our hearts yearn for him and become the best versions of ourselves we can be. That is what grace does. When Jesus entered Zacchaeus' house, a transformation took place. His home became a place where wrongs were made right, where injustice was changed into generosity for the marginalized. The presence of Jesus brought life to that house. And that's why this gospel is used for the feast of the dedication of the cathedral. Of course, all churches are made sacred and given life by the presence of Jesus. Our own parish here is also a house of salvation to our parish family. But the cathedral is a home where the entire Catholic community of the Diocese of Leeds, people from all walks of life, can come together and find consolation, love, and acceptance from the presence of Jesus in union with our bishop. Our cathedral is a house of salvation for our entire, our entire Catholic community. What we must take away from this gospel passage is that Jesus puts his word into action. He puts his money where his mouth is, so to speak. Those who are despised by people are loved by God. And what's so important for us to remember is that Jesus calls each of us by name. Just as he did with Zacchaeus, he calls out to you, me, and everyone to follow him. And you may not hear him calling in the way you might expect, but that tug you feel in your heart, that feeling that pulls you towards faith, that's Jesus calling you. May we always be attentive and listen to that loving call.